um, that they are uh, capacitated and that they have access to market opportunities in order to grow and scale their businesses. So I'll just make a case example. A, a young entrepreneur who's perhaps, and I think we see a lot of them on social media, who uh, go outside office parks and are selling sandwiches and may not necessarily have uh, skills and developments or may not necessarily have uh, post uh, 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 high school tertiary qualifications. And I think those are prime examples. Uh, in in the informal sector, those are prime examples of people the NYDA could be targeting to say, um, here is a grant that we are giving you in order for you to have working capital to be, to be able to buy the stock that you need to be able to scale the business. Here are business development services. This is how you market your business. This is how you run a, a profit and loss statement. This is what a profit and loss statement is. Do not just think uh, that you serving or you are running that business in, in, in that community is the end of it. Here are access to more market opportunities. How do you scale. You are in one office park now, but hey, there are five other office parks in which you can be uh, operating in. How do we make sure that you can employ more people so that your 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 your, your business can actually ex uh, expand? And now when you have expanded to a certain uh, extent, let's teach you about supply chain management. Let's teach you about scaling beyond uh, just where you are. Let's teach you about uh, running a retail organization. Let's teach you about e-commerce. Perhaps uh, you could be doing food delivery work, what you're doing. So I think those are prime examples that the NPDA could target, targeting those uh, uh, entrepreneurs or targeting those that are in, 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 in the informal sector who may not necessarily have tertiary and thinking right throughout their life cycle, where are we, where are we finding them and uh, uh, what programs and what services do we have in place to make sure that they can move on to the next level and scale and not stay small. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairpersons, and greetings once again, um, Ms. Dali. I must say that one is, is truly inspired to see, you know, a young woman doing or advancing in terms of sectors that ordinarily you, you don't see women advancing in. We do speak a lot about breaking the glass ceiling, especially uh, women that are younger in age. Um, according to your own, you know, um, knowledge, which sectors do you feel um, uh, of the economy that the, NYS, the NYDA must focus on in order to create jobs and advance youth development? Um, thank you, Honourable Member, for those uh, kind words. Um, and I think that's a very, very pertinent question. And I think I may have a bias um, in, in answering this question the centers that I am in and based on the exposure that I've had in my career um, based on the sectors that I've in. So I guess um, to answer your question, the first uh, sector that I really believe um, could be an enabler for job opportunities is the technology as a sector. Um, and I don't uh, because I'm a technology company. I say it because I see it. I've experienced it. And um, I think we can draw insights from other markets such as uh, uh, Kenya, where they've invested heavily in the technology sector sector and they've come up with innovations and they've come up with new jobs. And so how I think about um, uh, uh, unemployment and how I think about the future of employment is that the NYDA should be focusing not only on making sure that our youth are aligned with the current economies that are um, important to the GDP of the country, such as mining, such as agriculture, etc. I do think those are important sectors and I do think that youth participation should be prioritized in those sectors. But I do think over and above the technology sector should be a sector that runs um, uh, parallel to these big sectors that we currently have in South Africa. I'll just make an example about uh, a, a sector in technology such as telematics. So telematics is um, uh, when you, you, you use data, where you gather data and you enable an, another sector to use the data that it gathers in a machine to be able to operate that machine better. And I think uh, in, in digitization and in speaking about the NYDA should be focusing on to make sure that there are parallel sectors that we have in South Africa, but we are plugging in young people to make sure that the, the, these, these sectors that we have in, in South Africa make it to the next level so that we don't have to replace jobs, but we can create new jobs in the economy that can make the sectors that we have globally competitive and that can make the sectors we have even better in advancing. 
this is the socially um, th th this is the, a good approach because it incentivizes uh, industry to actually invest in the youth because they can see the benefit of hiring young fresh minds that actually offer something they know nothing about and I think on just the technology sector alone I, I, I made the example of Kenya where they invested in technology such as M-Pesa um, to make mobile money really easy to be able to pay for things uh, where they invested in uh, a technology such as Mkopa where people can get electricity and then they can uh, uh, have uh, vendors or agents who go out selling uh, selling electricity packs to people, or services such as Boda, where they use motorbikes and people can deliver things to uh, different people. So those are new economies. Those are new sectors, things that didn't exist. And I do think that South Africa has the opportunity because we have amazing infrastructure. We've got good roads. Uh, we've got things that our African counterparts do not have. We've got a young economy. We've got fresh minds. Um, we've got people that are willing and able. We've got strong industries that could be investing in these programs for their own development. So I really do think that on 4IR and the and the digitization of a lot of our economies and putting the youth at the forefront of that is the solution to a lot of the unemployment uh, 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 problems that we have. And I also think that the NYDA is strategically positioned to be able to uh, leverage not just South African industries, but industries outside of Africa. I think South Africa, we're in a unique position where we have a very young economy and we could be leveraging a big tech in, in, in a different parts of the world and saying, hey, you need a service economy. You need people to service your business and your tech business. Look at South Africans. We are here. We've got a beautiful English accent. We've got a lot of young people. They could be your customer service uh, a representative in your big technology companies. Invest in South Africa. Invest in our youth through uh, digitization. So I really think that um, uh, uh, working on new economies, working on new jobs, working on the next is where the NYDA should be. And I think that should be integrated in the inter, in the integrated youth development st uh, strategy and plan to say, this is the youth that we want uh, uh, to create that will not only be economically empowered, but will also be globally competitive. Thank you, Chair. Chair, my... Then be that um, obviously, Ms. Ms. Ali, we, we, we really have structural inequalities that we are dealing with. And you know that we have young people in rural areas who have never really seen a computer or even set an eye on what an iPad look like, looks like. Correct. It is a great idea for us, you know, to, to, to say that we want to advance in terms of a technological um, uh, aspects and stuff like that. So how then do we address that issue of that um, a, a, a limitation to access, access and, and, yeah. and deal with that, uh, um, that divide between yeah. the rural and the urban yeah. and issues of access? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really brilliant question. And I think uh, back on the fact that, uh, or on the mandate that the, that the NYDA has on social cohesion, I don't think that the mandate that the NYDA has, it has to achieve alone. And I do think that is where partnership is important, right? There are organizations such as Girl Code who go into communities and teach young people how to code and give them access to opportunities and open their eyes to say, this is a computer, this is how you can do a hackathon, right? So I think it, it's in partnership that the NYDA can actually go into penetrating these communities, right? But I think there needs to be a, a, a strategic mandate to say, this is what we and there needs to be an intention by the NYDA to say we are going to gather communities and we are going to gather um, uh, young people, skilled professionals to volunteer their time to going into these communities and doing it. And I think that's an, also another mandate that the, the NYDA has on civic participation of the youth. And I do think that there are a lot of young, skilled youth that are willing to participate and bridge the gap to bridge the access gap and willing to go out into these remote cities and be able to uh, give these skills to people. But I do think that the NYDA can serve as a channel for that, uh, serve as a structured channel for them going out. And I think I'm going to reference a report uh, by Africa, um, uh, I forgot the name of the organization, but what it was doing is it was surveying uh, civic participation um, uh, in, in South Africa. And what it found was that civic participation is low, but when asked if if they were given an opportunity to participate, young people, would they do so? 45% of them said yes. 
So I do think there is an un, an untapped opportunity in leveraging the, the, the haves that we have in the country who have been afforded opportunities, who have been afforded access to, to technology, and say, partner with the NYDA. Let's go into these communities. Let us partner with NGOs that are actually doing this, such as Goal Code. There are many others. And let's use them to actually penetrate our communities. I don't think the NYDA has to serve this mandate alone. And I don't think um, uh, in, in, in putting this mandate, it to actually serve it alone. And I do think there's a big opportunity in garnering industry, garnering civil civil particip, uh, civil uh, uh, community, NGOs, to say, guys, let's work together and let's penetrate where we need to. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, thank you, Chairperson. And um, thank you, sister, for your, for your input. I think that uh, it opens um, a certain wide of range of issues that needs to be followed up um, as we endeavor to respond to the questions that are confronting the youth in our country. And I think that my question is not far off from the questions that you were asked. In fact, it's linked to it, um, to a point that it says, how are you going to ensure that the NYDA, under your leadership as a board member, um, will consistently abide and be guided by the principles of youth development without prejudice. So, so it's it's still in line with what you you are responding to. But I just want to get a sense of this one as to try and close up the issues that you've opened in terms of this discussion. Thank you, Chairperson. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a very and I think um, it needs to be, so as, as the board, right, structurally, I believe uh, in the NYTA board, from what I've read in the NYT Act, is that there is a developmental uh, committee that is there in place, right? And I do believe that um, in, in, in making sure that in, in, in running all the uh, programs that the NYTA I think it also speaks to governance, right? I think it needs to be built into the governance framework of the NYDA to make sure that, that we are not excluding any members of the economy, right? And I think uh, even in my answer that I said earlier, when we think about the different career journeys that the youth could have, and I said we need to consider disabled youth, we need to consider youths in the LGBT, uh, LGBTQI uh, community, we need to uh, consider uh, 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 youths in, in, in the rural areas versus the urban areas. I think we need to to uh, consider socioeconomic status of the youth. And I think all of those different factors in making sure that we do not leave anybody behind should be built into the governance model of every program that the NYDA runs. And I think that it is the board's job to make sure that the operational policy and the governance policy of the NYDA are succinct and to make sure that they are uh, 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 in alignment with the PFMA and also to make sure that they're in alignment with inclusiveness and making sure that everybody is, is, is united and nobody is left behind in the in the mandate. So an example of this is making sure that if we have a grant funding program, or if we have a coding program, or if we have a, a business development program, how we select the youth should be built into the rubric, um, uh, and the inclusiveness should be built into the rubric of how we select. So similar to how our government has uh, put uh, the preparation uh, procurement uh, policies in place, we should do the same to make sure that there's a certain quota of, of young people in, within rural communities that are actually going to be uh, funded within our national funding programs, that there's a certain quota of people of representation of uh, members in the LGBTQI community that are going to be represented in the business development uh, programs that we run to make sure that when we are uh, mapping out our strategy in the countries, or I mean, not the countries, but in the provinces and in the regions and the districts that we're going to be investing in, we're making sure that all districts of all types are actually taken into account. So I do think as a board member, we need to build this into the operating system. It, has, it needs to be part of the operating model, because I think it's one thing to say we're going to do the right thing and then uh, go on and, and not build it into the into the fabric of how we run the organization. So at, as a board member, we need to make sure that uh, the developmental committee that sits on the board makes sure that this mandate is actually carried out and all the other supporting committees that are on the board um, uh, have a say in how we determine these rubrics and make sure that uh, all the different spheres of, 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 our, of our economy and all the different uh, uh, classifications of the youth in our economy are going to be fairly represented through the robust processes that we put in place. Oh, <laughs> just in time. 
Thank you, Sir Persian. Uh, Ms. Ngadi, as you know that uh, NYDA funding grant program offers both financial and non-financial support to qualifying young entrepreneurs. How are you going to monitor the implementation and accountability of the funding if you are appointed as a board member? Okay. Thank you, Honorable uh, Malika, for the question. I think that's also a very important question. And I think it, 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 the answer that I'm going to give to this question feeds very much to the answer that I had given uh, to the previous question. And it's all about setting uh, uh, our operational policy and our government and structures that ensure um, that we are building into the rubric the transparency, the accountability, and all the things that we need to make sure that uh, uh, everything that we do with regards to funding and the disbursements of funds is in alignment with the uh, um, uh, Public Finance Management Act. And I think as a board, uh, we need to uh, you know, realize how uh, uh, the PFMA actually recognizes the board as it recognizes the board as a, a, a an accounting authority, which means we have fiduciary duty, which means that if we do not act in the in the best interest of the NYDA, we could actually be personally liable. Um, and I think those, those are consequences that we need to uh, consider seriously and consider very dearly. So I, I, to answer your question, as a board member, it is very important that uh, we have structures in place such as delegation of authority. So making sure that when we are dispersing funds or when we have a rubric for who we disperse funds from, it is not just one committee or one function within the business that actually handles that, but every function of the business has a, a, a what we call in, in the world of corporate a racy, which says one person is responsible for, or for, for, for one uh, part of it, another part, a part is accountable for it, another party is uh, are consulted, and another party is informed. And that makes sure that if we're delegating authorities, every party can uh, uh, feed into uh, what that rubric looks like, and every party can flag things that they see that, uh, honorable member, this is not going according to plan, or can raise concerns and say, we don't think there's actually fairness in how we, we selected this person or how we selected uh, this particular company. So delegation of authorities is one that's actually very important. A second one is internal controls that also feeds into delegation of authority. So making sure that we have internal controls and checks in place. One person comes in, they don't just come in, speak to one person and get the funding. They go through a different uh, a funnel process that can be uh, monitored and that can be evaluated by the different committees that we actually have sitting on the board. So all the board members can actually say, um, uh, uh, like our credit and risk committee or our auditing or our, our remuneration committee can say, uh, how was it that this person actually made it through the funnel if we have all these internal co uh, controls and, and, and systems in place? So internal controls and system are very important. And I also think that um, it is, it's, it's also very important to have a robust audit committee, audit and risk committee that can make sure that the internal procedures that we have inside the body of the NYDA are robust enough to make sure that we don't have leakages and to make sure that we don't have uh, uh, compromises uh, uh, as the NYDA uh, in accordance to the PFMA. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Deep <laughs> closer. <Yeah. laughs> no mistake. <laughs> Any member? Thank you very much, Chair. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Ali, I'd like to ask you a question. Um, and I'd like you to, to take me through. If you are... Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like to, to ask you a question. If you are appointed as a board member and the profile of a young person, for example, who is living in the state, in Eastern Cape, in a rural area where there are no roads, there's no toilet, how will you, as a board member, 
work with the young <coughs> to give them uh, the experiences <coughs> that you told us here in this committee about <coughs> technology, about development, about uh, assisting them to connect to jobs uh, or job opportunities. What is the, the journey that you will ensure you travel with that young person in that rural area? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a very important question, and I think that's a very pertinent question. And I think, um, as I had mentioned earlier, we when we think about um, young people, and I think I'll just be very specific to you, to your question. I'll give I'll give I'll give the person a name, um, or maybe give the person a name for me so that I can. Uh, Maputi. Ma okay. So I think um, looking at Maputi's, I think to say, as the NYDA, they are. They, 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 in the in the youth population, right? There are more of Umaputi than there are of me in South Africa, to be completely honest, right? And walking the journey with Umaputi says, what where the youth bracket that we actually recognise as the NYTA is from 15 to 34, right? So let's say Maputi is 15, right? He's in grade nine. He's a learner. He's a scholar. He is not exposed to uh, technology. He's not exposed to uh, uh, all of the things that I'm actually talking about, right? The NYDA comes into this community and says, hey, Mabudi, here is a, a computer. Let me teach you about this computer, right? Let me teach you uh, this, is, this is Word, this is Paint, this is how you actually operate it, to open Mabudi's mind to say, hey, man, outside of stick spray, there actually is a, a skill that I can actually learn. And say Umabuti says that he's learning this computer, he's liking it so much, and he says he decides by and he's, he's really, really good entertaining people. He, he loves entertaining people. And we say to Mabuti, do you know that this computer can actually record videos? Do you know that you can actually send these videos of entertaining people to Uma Kulua Kwetofinvaba and entertain her? Right, so we take Uma, Uma Buti and we open him to this technology, to, to technological advancement. And not only do we teach him to use it, we teach him the application thereof in his context. Right, so now Uma Buti is is enjoying this computer. He's sending videos to Uma Kulu, and we say, you know what, Uma Buti, it doesn't end to sending it to Uma Kulu. There's something called social media, Konu Facebook, Uma Buti. Let's create an account for you. Right, he creates an account, and there it is, Mabudi. He's entertaining people on Facebook, and he's making a career for himself at 15. At 15, right? Mabudi can therefore go on, finish his matric, and decide. But well, you know what? I've been from 15 to 18. I've been using this computer once a month. The NYDA, or t twice a week, the NYDA comes, allows me to play with this computer, and allows me to showcase my skills to the rest of the world. I have built a following. What do I want to do? NYDA, I want to study social media management, or I want to study brand and communication, or I want to study um, uh, something related to this field. NYDA, get me funding. The NYDA then uh, liaises with the different parties, liaises with different uh, 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 companies in that industry, Avatar SA, TWSA, et cetera, and says, hey, there's a child called Mabuti who is doing these amazing things. Let's, let's invest in him. Mabuti then goes on to study at, uh, 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 at a, a great media school or at WITS or uh, at UJ, UCT, and he can then build a career for himself. And I can say that from that point, the rest is history because the NYDA opened Mabuti's mind, has come in, found him where he's at, found his interest and said, Mabuti, technology is not only for people who want to be in engineering or who want to be in finance. It could be for somebody like you who loves entertaining his grandmother at Baba and open him to say, you can export your talent and you can export what you can do to other places in the world. So I guess when I speak about technological advancements and when I speak about uh, the digitization, I'm not only speaking about uh, uh, the big terms or people who studied engineering like me. I'm I'm speaking about people who can export their craft. I'm speaking about people who can do event management and export that to the world. And how that has allowed us to say, in South Africa, we are talented. See our talent. In South Africa, we are great in sport. See our sport through, through technology. It has opened our world to say we can be globally competitive and let us do so. And I think it's the NYDA's mandate to make sure that more of our Mabuti are exposed to the world and exposed to the opportunities that can enable them to be globally competitive. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we have come to your, your Just a little question from me, Mayor Kali King. 
Yeah. Um, what available tools would you use to ensure that the NYDA remains compliant to national treasury regulations? Um, and that the, the budget are used for what they, they find the finances on the, the budget is used for what it is intended for, and that we eliminate fruitless and waste, waste wasteful expenditure. And in the same breath, if you could just touch a little bit on the presidential youth employment intervention. Okay. What are the so, interventions that the president talk, talked about? And how do you think needs to be done to ensure that those are not they actually see the day of the, the light of day? Okay. okay, so two questions that I that I'm reading. It's the one about the tools to make sure that in accordance with the uh, National Treasury or with in accordance to the Public Finance Management mm -hmm. Act.